So I've had some frame drops in iRacing recently, despite upgrading to a RTX 3070 Ti lately. Since I didn't think that the GPU would be the bottleneck of my system, uh, I thought I was looking at the CPU, which was the Ryzen 9 3900X at the time. I decided to upgrade that to check some results and ordered the Ryzen 7 5800X, but made a last second decision to also give the Ryzen 5800X 3D a test. There are a lot of reviews out on those chips in the wild, but none really focus on iRacing, which was my main pain. Since I was already benchmarking all three of them myself, I thought I might share the results here, and they are remarkable. So before I get started, I'm getting really technical and very much into detail here. So if you just want a quick summary, I have created chapters for this video, and you can skip to the final results there. Before you ask me why I didn't compare it to the new 7000 chips, I wanted to keep my mainboard and RAM and keep the cost of upgrade as low as possible. After all, these 5000 series chips are the last generation that was made for AMD's AM4 socket, and I'm sure many of you have the same thoughts. So let's look at the CPU spec sheets at first. On paper, these CPUs look very similar, and the 5800X looks even worse than the 3900X. Less cores, less level 3 cache, and a slightly better max boost clock. The 3D variant looks even more confusing, since it has less base clock speed and max boost clock, although it has a vastly higher level 3 cache, which AMD calls 3D V cache. The L3 cache is necessary for the cores to speak to each other, and it is way faster than DDR memory. So think of it as having post-its directly on your desk, compared to having them in your drawer, where you need to open it each time you want to write something. However, the CPUs are also part of a newer generation, which enables them to do more calculations per cycle, therefore having more computational power at the same clock speeds as the older 3000 series. AMD claims that this equals to about 20%, so I was kind of expecting this boost from the 5800X. I want to get into more detail for the multi-threading since I don't think that everyone knows how this works. For pure multi-threaded applications like rendering 3D stuff with Blender, exporting photos with Lightroom or even exporting a movie, both newer CPUs with less cores are in a clear disadvantage, like benchmarks from other creators show. For games though, it's a bit tougher. While the 3900X has 50% more cores than the others, this is not a pure advantage. Only a handful of games can scale very well to more than 8 CPUs, and since those CPUs are not that common in gaming PCs yet, developers rarely spend any time optimizing for this. You could imagine it being kind of like this, although this will be a very simplified example. Two cores will do the main math for the physics of your car, like tire temperatures, g-forces, springs and dampeners, force feedback, damage implications, setup values, whatever. Two further cores will calculate the opponents. While I don't think that iRacing sends all the data, like tire temperatures to your PC, it will send the position and the speed of other cars, as well as some basic information on G-forces, so that the other cars can bump on the roads and have their chassis react to that. Then you have things like time calculation for lap times, splits, etc., as well as communication between you and the server. And then there's also all that background stuff, like Windows itself, possibly Crew Chief, Race Lab apps, Spotify playing in the background, your chat applications, whatnot. In addition to more work for developers, a bigger amount of cores also leads to mass max boost in general. While the 3900X claims to have pretty much the same max boost as the 5800X, this only applies if a single core is being used. If you need the full power from four cores, the CPU has to manage its power consumption and will not clock four of the 12 cores to its max. You gotta remember that all three tested CPUs have the same claimed power consumption and therefore thermal output, which is important for your cooler because your cooler needs to be configured for that thermal output so the CPUs can stay cool. And 12 cores at max speed would be a lot hotter than 8 cores at max speed if they all overclock to the max. Speaking of overclocking, I generally don't do overclocking, so these results are base settings. So why not just take the 5800X 3D anyways? It's the newer CPU, it is excellent in some benchmarks, uh, so why didn't I just take that? It turns out that the 3D variant is not always faster. While the 5800X consistently beats the 3900X, the 3D sometimes loses to its cheaper and older sibling. So Linus Tech Tips has tested them 
And in F1 21, the 3D is actually 30% faster than the non 3D variant. But for CSGO, the 3D is actually 2% slower. Of course, this is not a lot, but why would I spend more money on something that might be slower? I did all these tests in a real world scenario. So I kept all the applications that I would normally use open, although some in the background. I also fully closed iRacing between all those runs, so you have a similar setting as you would change between races. The apps that I have running include iRacing, obviously, Crew Chief, Trading Paints, although the AI that I used wouldn't use any custom textures anyways, Race Lab apps with three overlays open, the relative window, the standings, and the fuel calculator. I also used iRacing Config, which is a small tool that enables me to switch between the graphic settings really, really fast. I also used Capframe X to record all these benchmarks. I also used other applications in the background like One Password, Glasswire, Malwarebytes, and Riot Vanguard, which is known to cause some FPS problems, but I wouldn't close it anytime I open up iRacing, so this stays open. The other system specs are as following, a Gigabyte Aorus B550M, 48 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at 3200 MHz, an NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti, the CSL DD wheel with Clubsport V3 pedals, and three screens that are kind of in a wonky configuration. So the middle one is 1080p, with 144 Hz and the side monitors are 1080p with 60 Hz. I know that the optimum solution would be to use 144 Hz displays on all three screens, but I had the 60 Hz ones lying around and I didn't want to spend any extra money. So in total, the machine is pretty good, but it's not like top of the line for other creators or something like that. For the testing itself, I did try to make the scenario as realistic and equal as possible. Since replays and iRacing do not stress the system in the same way as live racing, I tried to mimic online races and went for AI races with 30 AI drivers. I was sitting in a Ferrari GT3 while the other cars were random GT3 cars. As far as I know, the AI is calculated on iRacing servers, so this wouldn't cause any more stress on my end compared to online races. For the main test, I did three times three laps at Spa in the first testing segment with standing starts to make the tests as equal as possible so that the field is kind of the same. Then I did the same again, although one time each for the higher and lower graphical settings, which I will get into detail later. Then I also did six minutes in each graphic setting at Long Beach to verify that it's not just one map, although the results were comparable. So I was expecting about 20% more from the 5800X and about 35% more for the 3D variant, but Boy, was I wrong. So let's hop to the other setting. All right, so we're finally ready for the results. Uh, and they were quite amazing, even in high graphic settings where I thought that the GPU would be the only bottleneck. But um, since the GPU always has to wait for the CPU in order to, to render, you still get some improvements there, which is quite amazing. Uh, so what we're looking at here right now are my kind of default settings. Uh, the settings that I used to play in the past and still am. So we have the, the full resolution for the for the displays, but we have um, the FSR at balanced. The skies, cars and pit objects are on medium detail. The rest is on pretty much on low detail. Particles in full detail. Uh, I didn't limit the frame rate, of course, in order to make the benchmarks uh, worthwhile. And I had four times anti-aliasing on top of that. So I was kind of expecting 20% more for the 5800X and 35% more for the 5800X 3D. There are a lot of numbers coming up right now, uh, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through them. So I have kind of three categories. Um, I wanted to have all the three laps, including, including the start, uh, then only look at the starting lap and then laps two and three. The reason for that is that most people will experience the biggest lags at the start since all the cars are packed together and on top of that since I have a standing start there are also lots of things like tire smoke etc coming up. So in the first round I wanted to make sure that the results are kind of equal since the whole pack will be very tightly together whereas in laps two and three the field already begins to stretch and then the results are kind of hard to mimic uh, across the board. So actually the, the lab one results are pretty interesting. 
And as a reminder, I did three races with three laps. So I have 1,080 seconds worth of benchmarks, which are close to three rounds at Spa. Uh, and I always wanted to start the recording of the benchmarks when the red lights uh, hit, and then I would reset them for each lap at the start at the finish line. If we now look at the average frame values um, from the 3900X and the 5800X, you can see that the newer chip with less cores uh, is always at an advantage, giving it about 16% more frame rates. I was kind of expecting more, but that's what I got. Uh, and then I looked at the numbers of the 3D. Uh, it's just no competition at this point. The 5800X 3D almost doubles the numbers of the 3900X. So uh, this is this is just an insane jump. Uh, also, the CPU from the same generation looks really low in numbers here. If we look at the one percentage lows, so the lowest one percent of frames, also known as dips, the results are similar, although the 5800X looks even worse here, so the advantage is even lower. The 3D proves that the lows are not only caused by the CPU having troubles with smoke and whatnot, but also that the CPU can make a huge difference. So you even see a lot of boost in the first lap, even more so than in laps two and three at this point. The story basically repeats 40.2% lows, which equals to about 21 seconds of the 18 minutes of testing for each CPU. So like once every minute at worst. So let's jump to the next test, which is the higher settings. So you can see immediately that I have everything turned up to high detail. Um, I also added cockpit mirrors, a maximum of three, and I enabled the soft particles. The rest is pretty much still the same, um, but the results are still pretty astonishing. So now we get the better graphical settings, and I expected less of a difference here, since the work should be more on the GPU, right? Well, not really. The 3D is for some reason even faster here which is amazing. I should still mention that the total test, test data here is a lot less than with the version one, since I only tested six minutes of benchmark compared to the 18 minutes for the first version. But you gotta give me some slack here. I don't have loads of time for this. Uh, and I still think that the results are quite remarkable. And then we're gonna jump to the version three, which is basically the graphic details turned all the way down. So I have lots of things even turned off completely. I do not have cockpit mirrors. Uh, I re reduced the AA samples to 2x. So there's quite a lot of graphical stuff missing. Therefore, this should be the, the real test for the CPUs, the real drag race, so to say. And this basically turned out to quite a slaughterhouse. Uh, you can see the 3D is insanely fast. It's 168% faster than my previous uh, CPU. And you can even see that the 0.2% the lows of the 3D are higher than the average values for the 3900X. So the results are completely out of this world. Finally, also the 5800X is flexing compared to the 3900X. So you can see that the, it is also 80% faster on average. Um, at the start, the difference is not that much, but it's, it's a pretty good upgrade. So for the conclusion, if we take an average of all my graphic settings on both Spa as well as Long Beach, the 5800X provides a solid 37 increase in frames compared to my old 3900X while having the same clock speed basically. This was more than I was expecting, although the first rounds of tests were a bit underwhelming to say the least. I'm also glad that I gave the 5800X 3D a test because boy, this CPU is freaking fast. I did not expect to have doubled the frames while using the same GPU, especially since the open hardware monitor or Windows Activity Manager uh, never showed more than 70% usage on a single core. So I thought like, it doesn't use the whole CPU, perhaps the performance isn't limited by the CPU. Well, here I am proven wrong. <laughs> so in conclusion, if you don't want to upgrade to the AM5 chipset yet, and you're still running on AM4, the 3D will boost your frames by a lot. 
I think it's even worth upgrading from the 5800X since the values are so devastating. Now would be a good time to give me a thumbs up on this video. It would help other people that are searching for these results a lot. I would honestly avoid buying the 5800X if you can afford for the 3D variant. And since you're sim raising, I guess you do invest in your hobby anyways. So make sure to get the best deal right away. Oh, and by the way, I'm not planning on doing videos like this in general, but I will look at graphic settings and other programs like IR, FFB, and Racelab apps and their influence on the FPS soon. So if you have programs that I should benchmark as well, leave them down in the comments. That's it for me. I'm gonna go ahead and try to increase my eye rating once again, since I kind of lost quite a bit of amount since switching from the IR4 to the GT3 cars, so I need to do my best to catch that up. Thanks to you, and goodbye.